I'm about two weeks into my very first rotation of med school, which is OB-GYN. I can't say that I see myself being an OB-GYN doctor in the future, but I did have a very profound moment in clinic a couple days ago, which I wanna talk about a little later in this video. So I pulled the short straw and got assigned the night shift for labor and delivery, which means my day starts at 6.30 p.m. and ends at 6.30 a.m. And I'm running a little bit late, so I'm probably gonna have to cut this a bit short. I'll see you guys in a little bit. At 6.30, we have team sign out. This is where the day team transfers care over to the night team. And that way we're all up to speed on anything that might've happened throughout the day. Then at 7.30, the team will round and formulate a plan for every patient. What I've come to realize on my very short time on rotation is that the overall experience ends up being what you make of it. There's gonna be downtime. And then there's gonna be busy time. But the way I decide to approach these opportunities is completely up to me. Nobody wants to work with a disinterested student who just counts down the hours of each workday. And likewise, no one wants to work with a patronizing, toxic teacher who takes every opportunity to shame you. We decide how we want to portray ourselves. All right, so things have slowed down a little bit. I think I'm gonna take this time to go talk to some of the residents and other team members and find out what they like about OB. The best thing about OB is I can deliver a baby one day and then take out someone's uterus the next day. And that is the dream. The coolest thing about being an OBGYN is the ability to do a variety of different surgeries. So if a baby is not doing well, we do what's called a stat C-section or an urgent C-section. And we, our goal is to deliver this baby within one minute of our surgical incision. It's so interesting to do C-sections because the patient is awake and talking to you and then they get to see their baby and they're crying because they're so happy about seeing their baby and it makes you want to start crying while you're doing their surgery. So far it's been great. I did four weeks of nights of labor and delivery, which meant that I went from never having delivered a baby to delivering 30 babies. <laughs> OBGYN is one of those fields that you have the privilege of being a part of people's most unique moments of life, um, the birth of their child. Someone told me a story that you uh, delivered your own baby. I did, I delivered my son. The attending came in and said, who do you want to deliver this baby? Um, she said, I want him to deliver the baby. I said, I want to stand at the top of this bed, not at the bottom. And she was like, get down here. I was like, dang it. So I scrubbed up in my basketball shorts and t-shirt with scrub gowns on. I started delivering my son, it was like a blur. His head came out and I freaked out because he had a cord, a noodle cord, and I was like, <gasps> and the attending whispered in my ear, deliver through it. And I was like, I will. <laughs> so I went down, went up, my son was born. I held him like this and I was like, holy, I just delivered my own child. It was That's crazy, awesome. it was insane. <laughs> so now I can tell him I brought you in this world and I can take you out. I remember on my first day, a resident asked me to go check on a patient who just had a hysterectomy. You know, after watching so many Ken Jeong videos, I felt pretty confident in my abilities and was ready to prove myself. Your cervix is like a big fat peach, okay? It's gonna ripen, it's gonna open up, and then labor, a baby will be born. But when I got to the room, it was a complete disaster. I awkwardly asked a grab bag of pointless questions and forgot to perform the only part of the physical exam that actually mattered. I didn't check her incision site. Luckily, the resident went and saw her with me afterwards, and it turns out that her incision had gotten infected and she needed antibiotics. OB1, Maddie 0. So for all you space cadet med students like me, don't forget to check surgical scars on your post-op patients. To quote Rita Mae Brown, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. In other words, we learn from our mistakes. I have called this the one-handed Suture knot. I call this the disappearing suture knot. All right, I am headed to the operating room because my patient is about to have surgery. 
she's having an abscess drained and it's really sad. She's been having fevers and chills for a couple months now and just can't seem to get the infection cleared. So hopefully we can help her out, get herself feeling better. So we finished surgery, it was super fast, like 20 minutes in and out, and I think she's gonna do really well. Let's go grab some coffee before heading back. After the surgery, while I was obliterating some Remno flashcards, I took a moment to reflect on why I was feeling so empowered after leaving the operating room. It wasn't a very interesting surgery, but the teamwork struck a chord with me and I knew instantly that this was the coolest part about starting rotations, the learning culture. I watched as the attending coached Lamar on how to make a specific cut. Then Lamar coached Katie on her suturing technique. And then Katie taught me how to insert a Foley catheter. So on OB, we have an attending, a chief resident, a third year resident, a second year resident, a first year intern, fourth year AI, and then the bottom of the barrel, which is me, the third year med student. But no matter where you are on the staircase, there's always someone directly above you who can share knowledge and help you because they were in your shoes not that long ago. They've got the hands-on experience and they've learned from their bad judgment. Because when the team is cohesive, things just run a lot smoother. So I went around and asked different members of the team how the learning culture and hands-on experience helped them on the way. I think mentorship is huge. I had many mentors growing up, not just in medicine, but just in life. Um, and I truly believe if I didn't have those mentors, I would not be here where I am now. Eventually, I do want to come back into academics and teach medical students. Uh, I want to sort of be what that attending that got me into medicine, I want that for all the third years. So I want to uh, plant that seed that gets people really excited about the specialty. What really helped with building confidence and, and learning during residency is doing my family planning rotation. Um, as part of family planning, you learn a lot about counseling patients through a lot of difficult decisions or difficult situations. So once you kind of have that base of knowledge, the repetition that you get from seeing patients in these scenarios or in these situations multiple times help build confidence. It's the same with everything. It's with counseling patients or with skills. Once you do it once or you see it once, you're, you're scared and terrified. And then once you do it again or you see this again, you, you can fall back on that knowledge from before. I would say the best way to get by for third year would be to take each rotation as a new fresh start and to take each day as a new fresh start. You might have a bad day one day, but a good day the next. And you'd be surprised taking it day by day how much you learn by the end of third year and how ready you'll be for fourth year. <laughs> <laughs> so after speaking with everyone, I think we all agree on the fact that you need that hands-on experience in order to grow. It's going to be messy and rough, and you have to get your hands a little dirty with experience in order to obtain that good judgment. But you don't have to do it alone. We could all use a little help along the way. And just like that, OB is over. It's been a pretty interesting month. I learned a lot more than I expected to. I got to participate in four vaginal deliveries. I saw a C-section, did some minor procedures, talked to a ton of patients, and met some really cool and smart doctors. Definitely see a lot of room for growth in myself. Anyways, I'm tired as hell, so I think I'm gonna go hibernate for the foreseeable future. Um, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you.